Okay, here we are in the milling machine getting ready to cut the uh, breech block pivot bolt head clearance holes. It's a lot of language to describe it. I'm going to use a half inch Forstner bit. I've aligned the uh, point of the bit. I'm just a, maybe a tiny bit proud of the surface of the wood. It's right on the edge or maybe a tiny bit proud which is fine. It gives me a little bit of adjustment room later. Get my head in your way here and look at it with the flashlight. Yeah, I'm really happy with it. Uh, how I identified where to do it is I put the drop the action down in the wood. Now, of course, the uh, aft end of the action is going to fit all the way down in there, and this end is sticking up because the uh, bolt heads are in the way. Uh, so, sure, one could remove the bolt, but that's a lot of unnecessary effort. Um, I like to align the bolt heads and nut slot, the screwdriver slots, vertically. Um, and then uh, put the action in here, but hold the aft end up so that the steel is parallel to the wood the way it'll be when it's down in there. So you don't have a, uh, an angle based on the air. Uh, make sure it's flush against the back and then uh, mark it on both sides and then quadruple check it several different ways and make sure you're really happy with it because there's no way to put this material back and uh, now we'll go ahead and make this cut Yay! Another, another step done. So uh, now I'm going to flip this around, agonize over its location some more, poke the other hole, and on the other bench I'm also getting ready to glass bed a muzzle brake on the end of the HW90. So I'll show you how I'm doing that. Okay, bye. One thing I do, uh, if the, oh, zoom out here, if the handle of the vise is positioned such that gravity could make it loosen, I keep a hand on it. Or I find a way to get the handle so that gravity holds it in a tightening position. Just kind of a little safety there, just make sure. <clears throat> Since it's rather lightly held because, you know, it's wood, I don't want to really crank down on it. But uh, that's just something I do. All right, we're just going to clean up the back side of those cuts, and I'll meet you back over on the bench here in a bit. 
Well, hello everybody, here we are back at the HW90. After cutting the choke off the barrel and putting an 11 degree target crown on it and test shooting it and finding significant improvement in its accuracy, we can now proceed forward with putting the muzzle brake on. Most muzzle brakes we find out there on the air gun market uh, have a hole that's larger than the diameter of a Viral brake barrel uh, air gun's barrel. And there are some few rare brakes made that perfectly fit it. Uh, some brakes come with shims that you can install in order to take up that extra space. Um, this did not. This is one of the Apex muzzle brakes that um, oh, I forget the name of the website that sells them on occasion. They've been out for quite a while. Sometimes they have lawn ones which are really cool. Anyway, this is one that I had uh, extra in my kit that uh, I'm going to put on this client's gun. And its hole is larger than the barrel diameter by a fair amount. So what I like to do is basically glass bed the brake to the barrel. It's a simple uh, operation that allows one to use pretty much any size muzzle brake on any barrel, so long as the brake's bigger than the barrel, of course. So what I've done is I uh, bored a hole through a block of wood and put that on the barrel so that after this is cured, uh, I can slide this down and whack it off with a hammer. Now, if the wood splits in the process, and that's entirely likely, I couldn't find a piece of dug fur, so this is that cheap hemlock stuff that uh, Homer sells. And if the, if the wood disintegrates before this pops off, I have some tools that I've made that uh, bolt together around the barrel um, to slide on it. But this was quick and easy to do, and it, it should be enough. It's only going to take a small whack to get it to break loose. Uh, and then I uh, sliced a really thin strips of uh, painter's blue masking tape and laid those on there. Really thin because they're going to be encapsulated by the glue that's going to glue to the brake, not the barrel. And so this is going to have to slide off, you know, be beat off. So I didn't want a wide piece of tape. Additionally, I placed it right where the grub screw hole is located so that if I need to put some mineral spirits down on there to soften this tape I'd be able to. But I really don't think that's going to be necessary. I think this is going to come off just effortlessly. Then I did uh, partal number two wax on the barrel. Actually wax the whole barrel in case I have an errant fingerprint. Uh, it won't stick to the metal. Not that it would because it's been oiled but still I Part all number two, let that dry, and then PVA mold release, that's polyvinyl alcohol. It makes a microscopic thin onion skin, basically, that washes off with water. Then I made a flapper sander out of a dowel, cut a slot in the end of it with the bandsaw, and stuck a little piece of machine belt sandpaper in there, chucked this up in the drill, and went inside the, the, mu the muzzle brake to give it a good scratch inside to get good uh, epoxy adherence to the aluminum. I uh, used plasticine modeling clay over the grub screw hole so that I made sure you know it comes out on the inside and is nice and flush. Yep, I think you can see that. And so then we're going to mix epoxy. Oh, oh, after scratching it, then I did an acetone wash inside to make sure there's no residual oils in there. So hopefully we get a good bond to the epoxy to the muzzle brake and no bond to the barrel. <clears throat> after this comes off, we clean it up. It should be a microscopically absolutely perfect fit onto the barrel. And we're also going to put a little uh, machine, a little divot in the barrel for the grub screw to go into because this is a manly caulking gun. You sure don't want to be holding on to this thing and have this slip off the barrel. So I'm going to make sure that it's really on there good. I suppose some people could glue this on. You could do this operation and just glue it on, right? Don't, don't wax the barrel. Sand the barrel. Glue this on, like permanently. You'd be able to get it off with a lot of heat. Maybe. I don't know. This kind of resin doesn't soften well. You could use uh, DEVCON 30 minute epoxy. That does soften with heat. Uh, that would be a lot of hairy carry though, I think, to get it off. And not that one should, but if you wanted to work on the crown again in the future, if you want to, you know, in this case, because it's not going to be glued on, every now and then you might want to take this off and oil the barrel, just to, for rust prevention. 
Anyway, this is the way I'm going to do it. <clears throat> so we're going to mix up uh, glue, epoxy. We're going to use two-part epoxy, laminating resin. Uh, West Systems Marine Epoxy is a uh, common product used. I use what uh, Tap Plastic sells. It's very similar. They call it their marine grade resin, uh, resin hardener system. I'm going to use Fast Hardener. It's a 4 to 1 ratio. We're going to do that by uh, tearing the cup, putting resin in it. We're going to take that number that's on the scale and multiply it by 1.25 because it's a 4 to 1 mix ratio. And we're going to add hardener until we get the number on the scale that the calculator says we need. I'm going to add a little bit of black uh, resin to it to uh, give it a black color. But only a little bit. If you use too much of it, it affects the cure. I'll probably do a couple extra drops of hardener, which will help. And we're going to thicken the mix with Cabasil, and we're going to strengthen it with milled glass fibers. So, uh, here I go. So turn the scale on with the cup on. It's already teared. It also has a tear button. As usual, I'll probably mix quite a bit more than we need. Yep, yeah, that's probably going to be plenty. Just a little more. Okay, get that on the scale before the scale turns off. 9.9 .9 grams. 9.9 .9 times 1.25 12.37 so I'll look for 12.4 to keep the scale awake you know if, if this let's say the hardener is really slow to come out of the bottle it's cold or something you can just touch the scale to keep the scale awake okay 12.4 Just an extra little bit. Just an extra drop. Okay, we're done with that. We're done with that. Stir stick. So when mixing, uh, don't use wax paper cup because you'll scrape the wax off into the mixture. And of course, wax is anathema. Anath uh, doesn't stick to epoxy. Anathema, anathema. If the stuff is cold, you can heat it up with a heat gun a little bit, but that will definitely decrease your working time. And it should be about 60 seconds of mix, and you want to get the edges of the cup, all of the bottom of the cup, and make sure that all the resin and hardener is mixed together good. Now, you see all that in trained air. If you need to do an epoxy fill, you can mix it with a color and you could fill something, you know, maybe on a stock, turn it in, turn a bummer into a feature. But uh, you'll want to take and put the epoxy after it's finished being mixed in a vacuum chamber and that'll make all the entrained air bubbles come out and make for a, uh, a porous free mix. Alright, a little bit of black here. Oh yeah, just that little bit made it nice and black. And now start adding some thickener. This is uh, Thixotropic Silica. I'm using a particular product called Cabasil. I understand this is what McDonald's uses in their milkshakes to thicken it up. I guess it is a food grade additive. Getting thick, not there. Going to put a little more of that in and now get on with some milled glass fibers. And 
and this should just be about it. Now if you're doing this and you find out, oh dang, I added too much, you can just uh, judiciously blow on it to blow the excess powder out, but don't breathe in. I like to do it near the ground. This stuff is heavy. It falls out of the air almost immediately. You can also do it next to a uh, vacuum. I like to, I have a system over here. Mm, I can't see in my little tiny viewfinder, but I see my hand. So this is a uh, motor, motor speed control switch that I wired up. I can plug, I can plug the vacuum into it, and then I can th throttle the vacuum way down to just a, a real slow purr. All right, got you back in view there. So let me check my thickness. This seems pretty good. I think maybe I'm just going to go a tiny bit thicker. If your cabosil gets clumpy from absorbing moisture in the air, you can use a flour sifter. On projects where uh, that's important, I Absolutely do that, regardless of the condition of the cabisol. Run it through a sifter and make sure it's really... Oh yeah, I like that. About like cold peanut butter. Maybe just a little bit looser. Alright, so I'm going to take a pause. Not a cap pause. A P-A-U-S-E pause. I do the crossword every day. It makes a person think of multiple meanings for words. I just want to do a little quick cleanup here before I make a bigger mess. Good, good. Now I want to elevate this on that board. Oh, and then... Uh, what I'll probably do later is take a little piece of uh, saran wrap, a piece of plastic bag, and stick it over the lid and then screw the uh, lid back. Just stick it over the top of the bottle and screw the lid back on. These bottles come with these stoppers in them. They're really hard to remove because you can't let air in to get it out. And so I don't really like reusing them. They're just kind of a pain in the butt. Alright, so here we go. We got mixed glue. Yeah, I wanted to give myself a little indicator of how far is too far. Just like right there. We'll pull that off in a minute. It'll help me judge. Uh, how far to go. Now I'm not going to, I don't know, I don't think I'm going to put it inside the muzzle brake because when I slide it on it'll probably build up on the front of the muzzle and I don't want that to happen. And I'm not looking for absolutely perfect um, coverage. Right? All, all it's got to be is, even if it's spotty, it just has to uh, locate the muzzle brake on center. Doesn't this, doesn't this seem a little scary? Oh my god, what am I doing to this gun? Will it ever come off? Be afraid. Be very afraid. I'm kidding. Looks pretty big and goopy. I have some paper towels ready. 
Although a lot of times it's uh, easier to just let big goopy stuff cure. Then it picks off. You can heat it up with a heat gun and carve it with a knife. And if you try wiping it all off, and then it's, you end up with this really thin mass. But anyway, we're going to find out how this behaves as we put this on. Oh. This makes me think I should wax the outside of the muzzle brake. Hello. I didn't do that. Uh-oh. Got a little bit on the inside there. That's good. Good, good. Glad I thought of that. And now, a little acetone wipe on the inside edge where I kind of got a tiny bit of wax. One more time. All right. All righty. And it's not really necessary, but I'm going to go ahead and do a wipe of PVA on it. The very end there I'm concerned about for the epoxy because it's going to build up all over the place, but the rest of this is just for fingerprints. Alright, that's good. A little shot of heat gun. Just to dry it quick. As its name implies, polyvinyl alcohol dries pretty quick. Just gonna do another acetone wipe. Yep, I know. I gotta get get it on before the glue gets too sticky. I think we're doing okay. Shop's pretty cold this time of year. Yeah, I think we're good. Wax is good. Here we go. As soon as I started putting this on, I realized, oh man, that glue's going to go all over. I need wax. Looks good, muzzle is clear. All right, that looks fantastic, doesn't it? Looks like a big mess.
Yep, latex gloves would be nice. They're kind of hard to come by these days with COVID. Now you see why I worry about the accidental fingerprints. Oh, it's looking really nice. This is going to be cool. See, my first business was a composites business where I mainly made high-speed radio control model sailplanes. We call them slope gliders. And there's a lot of the operations in building an uh, airplane like that. They're carbon fiber, Kevlar, fiberglass, and a lot of the um, parts get bedded. The wing gets bedded to the fuse for a perfect fit, for example. Canopy might get bedded to the fuse. It's a great technique for dealing with all kinds of issues with uh, guns. Bedding the stock to the action. Bedding, uh, you know, if you, uh, if you have to shim a scope a whole lot in order to achieve the uh, point of impact you're looking for, after shimming it, I shim it with little thin strips of uh, masking tape like we just did. Once I get it sh hitting on target the way I want, then uh, take the scope off the reins and put epoxy in the reins and bed the scope to the reins. And then you end up with a perfect fit. You can crank down on it. Or, you know, if the scope's going through the reins at a crazy angle and you got this sharp edge of the reins, you crank down on the scope, you're going to dent the scope tube. That's what I do. This looks great. It's unfortunate this uh, muzzle brake has a teeny tiny little scratch mark there just from banging around in the box it was in I guess. Um, we'll cover that up with a little teeny tiny touch of paint or maybe just sharpie pen. It's really not a big deal. Especially since the muzzle brake is basically unobtainable anyway. Yeah, I know, I need to stop playing with it. But it just looks great. So the next project you see behind this one, right here, the HW30, this action is uh, down I cut these uh, holes yesterday and uh, they came out absolutely perfect. Here's the other side. Absolute perfection. And uh, sure, I don't put any fingerprints on this one. It's not waxed. But it's well oiled. And I didn't. So next is I got a glass bed, uh, the action to the stock, and then it's going back in the milling machine to finish cutting out the uh, depth of the trigger card which is missing by not much but a little bit maybe an eighth inch and you can see here from the space of the uh, trigger to the guard how much deeper the guard has to go in and then once it's down in there it, this will be buried inside the wood and then I'll be able to finish shaping the wood down to the trigger guard that's why I cut it a little shallow. It takes more time, extra steps, but I achieve perfect results. Okay, so I will turn uh, the camera back on when it comes to time to whack this muzzle brake off. I'm going to whack it off. Hmm. 
and uh, we'll see how that goes. And I will also turn the camera back on when I glass bed this uh, HW30 to its stock. But I need to do some cleanup here and to get the HW90 off the table. I'm going to let it cure for a little bit before I mess with it. So I will turn the camera back on in a while. Until then, peace out everybody.